Welcome to Electron Line. Before we get into the what we would call the, the Lorentz transformation equations, the equation that describe the transformation of one reference frame to another one when one reference frame is moving really close to the speed of light, let's take a look at the transformation equations in classical mechanics. Those are called the Galilean transformations. The reason why we call them Galilean transformations is because it uses classical mechanics, which means that the speed of the reference frame that's moving, let's say moving at the speed of u, is much, much smaller than the speed of light in such a way that we can say that essentially the time in both reference frames are equal to each other. So prime is considered the moving reference frame. Without the prime, it's the stationary reference frame. So here we have two reference frames. We call them S and S prime. S is the stationary reference frame. S prime is the moving reference frame. And at t equals zero, the origins are at the same location. That's usually how we kind of uh, reference them to one another. And then of course, since the S prime reference frame is moving to the right, let's say at speed equal to u, then after a certain amount of time, that reference frame will be quite a ways ahead of the other reference frame, the one that's stationary. But as long as the velocity is very slow, you can always say that t equals t prime. And that is what sets Galilean transformations apart from the special relativity transformations when we use the Lorentz transformation equations, because that's where the two times are not equal to each other. Time is relative and it does depend on the speed of the reference frame. So we'll see that in just a moment. Now, what we're going to do here is take, for example, that there's an event that occurs in the moving reference frame. So there's the event. And so how do we relate what happens in that event, the distance, the position, the velocity, and so forth of that event? How is that seen from both reference frame in a classical sense? Well, notice that after a certain amount of time has elapsed, the distance between the two reference frame is now equal to u times t. Remember, distance equals velocity times time. So relative to this reference frame right here, where we positioned observer A, the reference frame that's moving will now be a distance u times t away from the stationary reference frame. So let's say that we draw our position vector to the event right here in our moving reference frame. We'll call that r prime. And here's the position vector from the stationary reference frame. And I don't want a prime there. We call this simply r, the position vector from the stationary reference frame. And notice they are indeed different. Now, of course, every, every one of those vectors has an x, y, and z component. Now, since we're only moving in the x direction, the y component and the z component in both reference frames should be the same. Now, how do we compare the two? For example, let's say we want to find out what x is equal to in terms of x prime. So notice that this is the distance of the event from the origin in the x direction. We call that x prime. This distance is u times t. So x would then be simply the sum of x prime plus u times t. And so this would then be written as x prime plus u times t. Now, in the, Gal in the Galilean transformation equation, we can say since t is equal to t prime, this is a proper function, a proper equation. We don't have to do anything to it. But in the Lorentz transformation equation, we have to be careful because t and t prime are not the same. And we'll have to make an adjustment for that. Here, we don't need to do that. Now, in the y and the z directions, we can say that y therefore is equal to y prime and z is equal to z prime so we don't have to worry about at all about having to transform those now what about velocity how fast is the event moving now let's say that the event here is moving at some velocity v prime as seen by observer b in the moving reference frame then what will be the velocity according to a well since this reference frame is moving the right at u then the velocity is seen as by a would be v prime plus the velocity of the reference frame. So we can say that v in the x direction, as seen by observer a, is equal to v prime in the x direction plus the speed at which the reference frame is moving away. Now, what would be the velocity in the x and the, in the, z, in the y in the z direction? That would be the same. The velocity in the y direction would be the same as velocity in the y direction prime, and the velocity in the z direction would be equal to velocity z direction prime because the reference frame is not moving in those directions. And in the same token, whatever acceleration happens in the moving reference frame will also be seen in the uh, stationary reference frame, and since the acceleration simply changes in velocity, the fact that the moving reference frame is moving 
and the stationary reference frame is stationary, that would not make any difference in how the acceleration would be observed, and therefore we can say that the acceleration in the x-direction, as seen by the observer in the moving reference frame, must equal to the acceleration as seen by the observer in the, in the stationary reference frame in all three directions, y and z as well. So acceleration in the z direction by the moving reference frame would be equal to acceleration in the z direction by the stationary reference frame. Because again, acceleration is a change in velocity, so it doesn't matter how fast each one of them moving, the change would be the same as seen by both observers. And so you can see that the, that the transformation equations, the Galilean transformation equations, are fairly straightforward because, again, timing both reference frames are the same. But at least it gives us a picture of what it would look like in a typical classical sense. Now, in the next so many videos, we're going to show you all these transformations in the relativistic form because their time is not the same and it makes for very strange equations. So our first example is going to be our next video where we see a very strange experiment where you can see that two observers will look at the very same event, one in a stationary reference frame, one in a moving reference frame, and the time that they time for the event will be different and we'll be able to calculate that difference and set up an equation on how to convert from one time to the other, from one reference frame to the other reference frame. So we'll start with the Galilean transformations, now we'll move on to the special relativity transformations. And that's how it's done.